All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Montiel verse and welcome to Montiel's take on WWE. As you guys know, today I am going to give my thoughts on WrestleMania night one. I'll be doing a WrestleMania night two thoughts right after this video. Uh, just to start it off, I mean, holy shit, right? Holy shit is what I could say about this whole WrestleMania. This is the best WrestleMania we've had, in my mind, since WrestleMania 31. Okay? I feel like the last seven WrestleManias, or last six, not counting this one, have been good at best, but they have not been great. They didn't leave us with, holy shit. You know what I'm saying? This, this two-night event, WrestleMania 38, did that. It did that. All right, so let's break it down. Let's go through night one first. Obviously, the Usos were going to retain against Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs. That match was whatever. Um, I wasn't really hyped about it. You know, once the Usos came out, I was throwing up the one. And, you know, I knew my boys were going to take it home, and that was the end of that. Pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Like, Nakamura and Boogs, there's no effing way that they were going to beat these guys. This is a, this is a top-tier tag team. They've been on their game for 250 days, and they're not going anywhere. And that's all I got to say about that. I do wish uh, Rick Boogs a uh, speedy recovery for because he tore some tendon in his knee, I think. I don't know the exact uh, part of his knee that he tore, but I, I do know that it's not that serious. Pat McAfee was commentating on it uh, right when it happened. So hopefully he gets back to his back on his feet and back in the ring as soon as possible. Drew defeated Corbin. Um, so that was that. I mean, there was no way Corbin was going to win either. The Billy McIntyre up from where I'm standing, it looks like Drew McIntyre is going to be Roman Reigns' next opponent um, for the unified belt. Pretty much, which I'm dying to see what that new belt looks like, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, Baron Corbin's uh, end of days streak has been ended. Up to this point, nobody has ever kicked out of the end of days. Drew McIntyre threw that away, threw it in the trash at WrestleMania night one when he kicked out at two and three quarters. I mean, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like... There's not much you can do about that. Do I feel bad for Corbin on that front? Yes. You know, because it's the last thing the guy had. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's, in my opinion, this gimmick is stupid. He's not going anywhere. This guy should have been like a world champ by now, and they're just completely wasting him. I don't like his look. I don't like his gimmick. I don't like anything about him anymore. I mean, the last time I liked this fool was the lone wolf, and maybe I'll let the constable thing go. But once he was a king and, you know, then broke Corbin and, you know, it, it just made no sense. Like, whatever. Okay, this is what pisses me off the most. This is where I'm really going to get heated. Logan, Paul, and The Miz defeat the Mysterios. Do you know how big of an insult this is, not only to the wrestling community, but to the Latin community? I mean, at least from where I'm sitting. This man is a spoiled prick of a fucking person. Fucking just a fake bitch. Stupid ass white boy social media star who doesn't deserve a goddamn thing that he has. But he's one of those guys who knows how to play the game and got lucky and fucking has his whole social media empire, you know, built for him or whatever. I'm not going to get into it, but this is the kind of people that are just, well, oh God, whatever. The Mysterios, you understand how precious of a legacy that Ray and his lineage have carried up to this point? And now they're trying to pass it on to Dom. Dom is supposed to be the, the, the next Mysterio that, that takes it to that next level. He's supposed to fill his dad's shoes. This is the first father-son tag team, and you telling me some asshole like Logan Paul and The Miz are going to take that away, going to make them look like just fucking amateurs of what they do? 
It just it makes no sense. I don't understand why Logan and the Miz won. What is the thinking there? Nobody likes Logan Paul. He fucking sucks. And I know what Vince is thinking. He's probably thinking, well, well, he gets a reaction and people are gonna, you know, be sitting in the seats waiting for him to get his ass whooped. Okay, that's all fine and great. Have him the event, but have him fucking lose. Have him lose. Why is he winning? It makes no sense. Look, I don't have anything against the Miz, really, but Logan Paul, I can't, I can't stand Logan Paul. And then they try to make everybody feel better by having the Miz turn on Logan. I'm like, well, it's too fucking late now. Like, who cares? And then Jacob was just a, he was an annoying prick on the fucking pre-show and shit, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? He was like, oh, fuck, I, I beat people up in the audience, like, you know, for a living and shit. And I was just like, give me a fucking break. Yeah, motherfucker, yeah. You and your brother fucking fought people who don't even fucking matter. Or they were fixed fights. Okay? And that's the fucking truth of it. End of story. All right? End of motherfucking story. <sighs> Getting off that fucking embarrassment. Uh, Bianca defeated Becky Lynch. Now that was a fucking match. That was a match. The women. Continue to steal the effing show. To me, this was the best match of the night as a match. You know what I'm saying? I know it's a little bit bold, but honestly, I was really invested in that match. Okay. My grandfather, who was an old man, okay, doesn't even watch this, doesn't know what the fuck is going on, is jumping out of the seat, laughing his ass off, enjoying the match, enjoying all the spots. He enjoyed this match so damn much. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did not expect this shit at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, as you grow older, your perspective changes on a lot of shit. And I'm not afraid to admit that when I was younger, my early teens, I was a sexist little fucking prick. Thankfully, I'm not that way anymore. And... I'm glad I'm not, because if I was, I wouldn't be able to enjoy the talent that these women have. You know what I'm saying? Bianca defeated Becky Lynch. Now, let's talk about the match. Okay, first of all, Becky comes out, fucking glamorous entrance. You know what I'm saying? Just like, I don't know what kind of car it was, but it was some sort of SUV. Not an SUV, but I don't know. I'm not a big car person, but I loved her look. I loved the, the intro, that promo before she came out. That was fucking awesome. Her hair looks pretty fucking cool for, you know, it being cut and shit. Um, and then I, don't, I didn't really like Bianca's entrance. Um, I'm not a big fan of, uh, you know, college bands, you know, playing wrestlers in an in arena. I don't think it's appropriate. It just doesn't fit the whole vibe of WrestleMania, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. But the spots in this match, you know, when Becky, you know, manhandled, slammed Bianca into the stairs, that was insane. She got up at the count of nine, went back in the ring and broke the count. Back and forth, the spots when Bianca had Becky on her shoulders on the second rope and she just, bam, threw her into the ropes. That was fucking insane. Just back and forth and back and forth and the crowd was into it. it split. Right down the middle. Half the crowd was going for Becky. Half the crowd was going for Bianca. And, I mean, you had to check your pulse if you weren't in this match. This shit was fucking off the hook. You know what I'm saying? I enjoyed the hell out of this match. And, look, I called it Bianca was going to win because it made sense. Like, I told, I told everybody that common sense is telling me Bianca, but I want Becky to win because I like Becky better. But I'm not, you know, upset that Bianca won. I don't have any, I don't have much against Bianca. It's just, you know, I grew up with the four horsewomen and it was awesome seeing their journeys and shit, especially, you know, Becky, Sasha, Bailey, Charlotte. Uh, so, yeah, to see her lose, it was kind of like a bittersweet moment, but hey, it is what it is. I enjoyed the shit out of the match and that's really all you can ask for. Charlotte defeats Ronda, couldn't be happier. 
I know a lot of people don't like this match for whatever reason, but I can't stand Ronda Rousey. You guys already know why. I just do not feel like she has any respect for this business whatsoever. Maybe not all of the rumors are true about what she says, but the way the other women, uh, Lexi Bliss, Sasha Banks, you know, um, among others, don't like her because of her working style and the attitude towards, you know, them, her coming in, getting paid more when she's hardly doing any work. Um, the way she wrestles, she injures people. Her character fucking just sucks. Like, you cannot get all this heat with not even half of it being true. Like, I just do not like Ronda. She does not belong in this business. Not in the wrestling business. She does not fit the bill whatsoever. I don't like her for shit. Never have. Was it a controversial ending? I don't think so. I think it's literally chopped up to Ronda's inexperience. You don't throw another wrestler into the ref, especially when it's Charlotte Flair. The daughter of the dirtiest player in the game. Like, you should have known better than that. The ending of the match, she throws Charlotte into the ref. Charlotte kind of like spears the ref. Then Ronda gets her in the arm, in the arm bar, if I'm not mistaken. And, she, and Charlotte's tapping out because she knows the ref is now. This woman knows exactly what she's doing. Then Ronda let go, lets go of the hold, picks up the ref, trying to get him back up. She turns around, big boot from Charlotte, one, two, three. End of story, end of match, end of the night for both of them. I like Charlotte a whole lot better than I do Rhonda, but I'm no big fan by of Charlotte by any means. But I do respect her talent in that ring. Next, we move on to the big, big, big news. Seth Rollins comes out with this whole theme song. He's got the choir singing and then shit, and the song plays. That was pretty cool. I don't know what the fuck he was wearing, though. I mean, the, he was wearing something Victoria's Secret models wear. You know what I'm saying? Like, see-through. Like, it was just weird. I'm like, okay, dude, you do you. But, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be wearing that. Then, he's waiting there for about a minute and a half, and the arena goes dark, and you hear wrestling has more than one royal family. And the American Nightmare rises out of the stage, and it's Cody Rhodes, and the fucking crowd went nuts. I called it. I'm like, as soon as a uh, AEW and Cody Rhodes couldn't reach an agreement, and Cody decided to leave, he was going straight here. And a lot of sources have leaked out that Cody told Vince that he believes that he is the best wrestler in the world. And the only way to prove that is to be in this company and prove it against people like Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre and Edge and Roman Reigns and all these guys. And it's true. Look, I don't give a shit what AEW does, okay? Let me just break this down. Let me give you a quick 30 seconds. AEW will never reach the level that WWE is at. It won't ever. Jericho can talk all the shit that he wants. And don't disrespect to Jericho. He's one of my all-time favorites. I've watched him since I've been watching WWE. But he honestly is counting his chickens before they hatch. Tony Khan is going to take over sports entertainment within the next five years, really? They just lost one of their biggest assets in Cody Rhodes. He is one of the founding fathers of AEW. And now he's with us where he belongs. AEW will never have a WrestleMania-like event. It will, it will never happen. Look, if, we, if we're paying attention, Drew McIntyre, Cody Rhodes, I mean, all the big guys are coming back. Because, look, and you when you get released by the WWE, my thought process would be, okay... I'm going to show you how big of an asset I can be to your company by making another company as big as yours, if not better. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the mentality. Even though it's almost impossible, that's mentality. And when Vince and all these guys see that, and they see the work that they're putting in, and they're bettering their in-ring skills, and they're bettering their character, 
and everything like that, they come back, they get called back to the big dance. You, you, don't, you don't burn your bridges after you've been released by a company that runs the show, WWE. That's every wrestler's dream to get into. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would you try to burn bridges just because you had a bad break? I mean, I know things don't always go well in business, but your goal should be ultimately to get back there and be on the product that made you want to be a wrestler, pretty much. I don't know. That's how I would think about it. Anyways, moving on to Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins' match. It was a good match. I felt like it could have been a little bit better. Like, it was great, but it was just missing something for me. It had good spots. Um, when Rollins had him in that, that, that power bomb and he threw him into the, the ring barricade, that was pretty insane. I think Seth may have actually kicked Cody here because he had like this big well, like this big cut right here over his forehead. And I was just like, all right, bam. We did him like that. But nah, man, it's like, it is so good to have him back. There's just, there's no way to describe it. I literally started crying when I saw that fool. Like, he's back after six years. That whole, that spot where he did uh, the Stardust pose and stuff, is just shedding skin, like Corey Graves was saying. That shit was just, it was awesome. Like, that ain't, that ain't Stardust anymore, motherfuckers. That's the American nightmare. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we want. That's what we want. And I'm so glad that Vince gave Cody creative control from what it's looking like right now because he came out with the American Nightmare theme. He came out with Kingdom by Downstate. And he didn't come out with Smoke and Mirrors because that's not who he is anymore. He's a completely different dude. I mean, it is just awesome to see uh, the ending. Um, three crossroads with uh, the bionic elbow. Tribute to his dad, Des Dusty Rhodes. I mean, it was a great match. I'm so happy to have Cody back. I mean, the amount of dream matches that we can get now, Cody versus Edge, uh, Cody versus Rollins, we just got that, but, like, I would love to see a rivalry between them. I don't know if, well, Cody versus AJ would be fucking great. Cody versus Drew would be interesting. Cody versus Kevin. I mean, there's just so many things that they could go with with this. And I'm just so happy. I'm so excited to have him back. The crowd was all on Twitter. It was really a special moment, dude. Really. Stone Cold defeated Kevin Owens in the main event of WrestleMania Night 1. It was awesome, dude. Like, it had people crying that he was back. People were excited to see Stone Cold. Stone Cold is a Mount Rushmore face of this company, of this industry. I mean, this fool is just, he's legendary. And when that glass shattered and he came out and his AT wheeler, I mean, it was insane. It's like he didn't miss a beat. He did not miss a beat. And I knew this match was going to get done right. I, I love the no holes barred, a twist to it. Because I'm like, this is Stone Cold. This ain't Goldberg. This ain't, you know, one of those legends that comes back and it's just fucking 10-minute match or whatever. This fool put in the work. This fool wanted to go out with a bang because that's who he is. That's how much he loves his business. That's Stone Cold Steve Austin. And Kevin Owens, man, he played that part perfectly. Played it perfectly. Not Goldberg, not Lesnar was able to get him out of retirement, but Kevin Owens did. That just shows the level of respect that Stone Cold has for Kevin Owens. That's fucking insane. It was a great match, great moments. All the beer, all the stunners, all the chair shots, all the suplexes on the on the stage. I mean, it was just fucking awesome all the way. That fight in the crowd. But ultimately, the, the right man won. There was no way Stone Cold was going to walk out of Dallas, Texas as a loser. So for night one, I think it might have been better than night two, slightly. I feel like giving night one an 8.5, for sure. And I know that seems low, but for 
the Usos match wasn't all that because we knew they were going to win. There was no competition, really. Drew was honestly going to be Corbin, and that match was Zach Lester. Logan and Miz shouldn't have fucking won, period. That's why it's at an 8.5. But other than that, those other four matches, fucking awesome. This is why I love WWE. This is why I've been here since 2008. This shit has been a part of my life since I can remember. And I can't wait to see what happens tonight on Raw. Can't wait to see what happens, period, in, in the coming months and years. I'm, I'm going to be here for the long run. My dream is to be a commentator for these people. I will replace somebody when somebody chooses to retire or maybe even sooner than that. Whether it's going to be sitting beside Corey Graves, Pat McAfee, Michael Cole, Byron Saxton, you know, I, that is my goal. And I can't wait to accomplish it. So stick around. I will have another video coming after this one, Night 2 Review, as well as Night 2 Reactions. I have some reactions on all of them because Night 1, I had to take care of my grandpa, so I don't know. He wasn't really comfortable with me, you know, yelling at the TV and, you know, having a, you know, recording camera and shit. Like, so that that didn't happen. Night 2, kind of the same thing. Family came in, so it kind of ruined that. But I will show you guys what I have. And subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Deuces.